RBM Challenge Season 1 Episode 6 um, I think the first time I heard about design management was in 1979 in Saigon I was completely puzzled by these two contradictory terms how do you make them work together but in today's episode we'll take you through the basics of design management and why you should, why you should care about that enjoy um, hello everyone I'm very happy that you're joining us today, um, and I'm very happy that you're here, Paula. Thank you, Theres. Um, and maybe you can like just take a uh, tell us a little bit about your background. Uh, my name is uh, Paula Vela. Uh, I'm design manager. I uh, my background is a product and a strategic uh, designer. I did actually my master and my doctorate at Aalto uh, University many years ago when it was still Tadetolin and Corcacolu. After that, uh, uh, I joined Kone Corporation, where I was uh, a design manager. Uh, my final post was a service design manager, the first one in the organization. So uh, my task was to build the service design competence. Before that, I was working with a product portfolio, a uh, design portfolio for elevators. Um, after I left Kone, uh, I uh, am now a business partner at Livework. Uh, one of the pioneer agencies in service design uh, based in London, Oslo and Amsterdam. So we're looking at establishing ourselves here in Helsinki. As a design manager, what has been one of your, like a big learning moment for you? Uh, I think probably my bootcamp training was creating the service design competence uh, at Kone because we had to start from zero start from defining what service design is in general and what it means uh, for Kone. And we needed to start uh, uh, from ourselves and it took some time to be able to explain and to gain the trust in the organization to start building something. And not uh, because of a, of a challenge of, of, of uh, not wanting, but because it's really difficult to explain. Many times I think that it's more the challenge of ourselves of explaining what we do and why we do it than of the organization understanding it. Uh, but perhaps the, the, the key moment was when there was a single moment that I realized like, okay, now we have gotten it. Uh, after get, getting many questions of how, what is service design and not being really able to explain, we got small budget to make a pilot project because we thought maybe we have to show what it is rather than tell what it is. So we got a, a small uh, uh, budget, we got a, a big challenge, one of the ones, the, the, the technology organization thought it was the biggest challenge, and uh, we got an external agency to help us uh, how to frame this. And we just did very few people, little money, very short time, a test. And uh, we came up with some solutions, we had some paper prototypes, and uh, one of the the w one I felt that was really important, we make actually a digital uh, yeah. mock-up of what it could be. And uh, the moment I had another meeting with the business team where, who were already very tired of me, uh, the moment that they saw the, the, the uh, uh, mock-up prototype of what the solution could be, there was really a second that the business, one of the top business owners, lifted the eyebrow. On, uh, you could see that he was like, Oh, now we're talking. So I think uh, 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 when you're able to make either a big vision, a big problem, uh, uh, a big desire to make the uh, uh, organization or the product or the service uh, really customer user driven, when you're able to make that future concrete enough for everyone to grasp, that's what, where the magic moment of design is. Brilliant. Yeah. So prototypes, making things yes tangible exactly it's, it's very important yeah because uh, uh, in my experience everyone in the organization had a vision of where to where they wanted to go but still in big terms in big dreams and uh, 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 what design can contribute it is to make those small bits that are concrete enough that you can grab it and say like yes that's where we want to go and how we're going to get there 
in which ways do you use design to elevate innovation in projects? I think that the most powerful uh, way of doing that is the visualization uh, part. Uh, also using out-of-the-box methods. I think everyone is so tired of PowerPoints and, 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 and linear stories. So uh, using, for instance, videos to bring the, the voice of the customer on the end user rather than have a PowerPoint that has three bullet points that this is what the customer wants. Have a video of the customer saying what makes a good day for them. That was a very powerful way of, of, of using design and using this, better say, design thinking and design methodologies to uh, 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 try to build uh, some innovative solution or even framing the problem or the challenge in a different way. Uh, but other ways, um, making a scenarios, but making a scenarios as uh, uh, accessible and in a different way than uh, what business scenarios can be like. So looking really at the qualitative uh, uh, aspects, because I think that's what we're hunger, hungry for. We have a lot of data of what business needs, and uh, of what customers do, but we don't understand why they do a certain thing. For instance, a bank may have data of how their customers use their credit card or they don't use it, but uh, uh, what designers can do by observing the everyday behavior is understand the motivation, how they act like they act. So uh, uh, how to bring, it, it's a big question of how it's to use design uh, yes. uh, uh, to make in, uh, innovation. Uh, I think it's about, again, making the future concrete or the uh, customer or user uh, uh, desires concrete enough to be able to act upon. Because it doesn't uh, uh, help you much to say we are a customer centric company. But what it can help you to move forward is to say, for my customer, a good day is when he looks good in front of his uh, 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 tenants, in the case of Conan. Or, or for my uh, customer, what makes a good day is when uh, uh, he has to work less. Or when uh, uh, my, my end user uh, makes a good day is when she can handle baby and work without <laughs> being compromised with, with uh, either. So it's about making the big questions into small bits that you can do something about. Thank you. So in your experience, um, and as the students of IDBM now is going to be facing, um, they're going to have a complex project. Mm -hmm. And I'm really curious if you know any tools or methods that they can use to be able to navigate complexity and and be able to better deal with like high level of uncertainty in a project. No, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think there is one way of, of doing that. But I think the sooner you you move into concrete uh, hypotheses, maybe hypothesis is the best way that you have different hypotheses that you can present. For instance, the the customer of the IDVM uh, uh, project. This is how we have understood you in an scenario format, for instance. This is our hypothesis. Are we in the right direction? And uh, uh, so maybe that. But for me, the best is just to you know print things out and start putting in the wall and organize and reorganize them. I mean, the typical. Uh, 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 we actually have a really good picture from Kone that from outside the building you could see where the service design team was, because all the building was really clean as you know as in the renders of the architects and then our room you could feel it, see it filled with bright post-its from the street actually almost from the highway because it was so so, so high so but at the end of the day that space uh, um, was what also helped us because it was inspiring it was different than others it showed somehow that it was a creative area I remember one uh, 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 day quite late, uh, some guy from some front line from, I don't know, where in Europe came and knocked the door and, and he asked because he had heard about what we were doing and so on. And he asked like, excuse me, is this where the magic is being done? And I was so <laughs> proud because one of our designers stood up and she was like, absolutely, welcome, come in. So uh, 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 I think it's 
just feel comfortable that it's going to be uncertain and that's part of the process. It's okay to be like, where do we start? Because you never know actually where to start with. So uh, start printing things out, start making notes, uh, uh, start organizing them because then soon enough you will find some patterns. And if you don't move along two or three hypotheses at the same time until you have some, some uh, uh, feedback from the, either the customer or the, or the end users you're working with, but just uh, uh, trust a bit yourself and, and feel comfortable with not yeah. having a clue with what you're doing because that always happens. Indeed. Yes. So be visual. Yes. Validate assumptions that you have, perhaps. Yeah. Print out, put up on the wall. Yes, prototype. Prototype. Yes. Be a designer because that's uh, uh, what <laughs> you know we all being hired for i think sometimes we want to be too business-like or too uh, uh, technology uh, uh, techies or, 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 or uh, technology driven but be designers visualize be concrete be imaginative think of the future uh, uh, go out there and and, uh, uh, and always have a really positive and can do attitude because that's also contagious as a negative attitude is contagious also a positive one so in your experience um, what do you think is the opportunities and perhaps also the challenges when it comes to interdisciplinary teams yeah well, I think I think all design work if it was, wants to have a real impact has to be interdisciplinary by, by, by nature because you need to bring it's not just about imagining the most desirable future it's about how to get there. And uh, so you have to bring in yeah. the, the persons that know how to get there. So uh, that's one of the, of the most important uh, uh, mm. capabilities, not to be an expert on business, for instance, but be able to communicate with a business person, to listen, to, to draw conclusions of, of what they, they want, communicate, not be an expert of everything, but have some basic understanding, and especially respect of, of, of the other disciplines. Because at the end of the day, in my experience, everyone wants to create something better and something good and something valuable. Yeah. Uh, uh, but we have different ways of reading how to do that. So being responsive enough and respectful enough to try to understand those different perspectives and then bring them in rather than fight them, uh, that's what, in my opinion, interdisciplinarity is in design. So. What, what advice would you give the IDBM students? Uh, don't think of whatever project you're doing as a school project. You have a client and you have to deliver it. And you, ha ha you are accountable for what you deliver. And who knows, this could be not a project but your interview for a job. So, so think you're actually in an agency and you have to completely blow the mind out of your, your client. So, so take that attitude. You're not at school anymore. So, Paula, what comes to your mind when I say success? Building. Technology. Human. Space, like outer space. Uh, frontiers. Business. Uh, impact. Innovation. <laughs> <laughs> Innovation. This, this, this little guy. <laughs> uh, uh, every time you, I hear innovation, I can only refer to your former director, uh, Nick Okoria, because I learned from him that it has, for innovation to be, uh, real innovation has to be socially implemented. So. Social impact. Social impact. Ah, Miko Kori. Um, <laughs> future. Uh, our responsibility. Strategy. The big idea. Design. Uh, the future in concrete terms. And IDBM. Uh, some of the best designers I have recruited. <laughs> wow. And I am a DB. 
I am BB. What is that? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Paula. <laughs> so I am BB is actually it's like a film site and everybody it's ah, quite okay, often that okay, people yes, confuse yes, these yes, two, two right, terms. Right, right, right. <laughs> I actually, when I I wrote IDVM when I was trying to look for that database, so I have the opposite problem. Yeah, okay. <laughs> oh, but that's a good accent. Yes. So actually, IDVM goes before yeah, IMDb. Yeah, yeah, yeah.